Cap City and in the territory on West, there is just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Coffee, Doc? Oh, no, thanks, Kitty. You mind if I have some? No, not if you can stand it. I can. <laughs> Another game of checkers? Oh, I'll be crowning kings in my sleep as it is. Why don't we just call it a night, huh? Yeah, might as well, I guess. Mm-hmm. Doesn't look like Matt and Chester will be back tonight anyways. No use waiting up. You worried about them, Doc? You, who, me, me, what do you mean, worried? About them? <laughs> yeah, of course not. I didn't really expect them before tomorrow anyway. Or even the day after. Well, it's a long ride to Hayes City. And if they had to stay over to testify... Or I guess they can take care of themselves. <laughs> <sighs> but there has been some Indian trouble up that way again. Huh? Yeah. I heard a... Patrol went out in Fort Dodge last week to ransom that Mary Tabor who got captured by the Arapahoes. Well, anyway, it's not Indians I'm worried about. It's those Hayes City females. If you... <laughs> oh, yes. I heard about them myself. <laughs> you think that's what's holding them up? It had better not be. Uh, yeah. Oh, here we are worrying about them, and they're probably enjoying themselves in some honky tonk saloon. Girls and liquor, singing and dancing, and oh, yeah. oh my! Yeah. Oh, we'll say they're having fun, all right. Mister Dillon, you reckon that's a coyote singing? That sounds like a coyote, Chester. Yeah, but it might be any. Yeah, it might be. What's the matter? Are you worried? No, sir. Just kindly dry. We ought to be about to the river, don't you think? Yeah, any minute now. I sure will be glad to get there. Oh, I ain't complaining, you understand. And you was perfectly right not to camp back there at them rocks. Oh, well, the horses need water. Yes, sir. I said I ain't complaining. You was right to come on to the river, even if it is pitch dark. Only thing I declare I could eat me a buffalo, hide, hoop, and horn... I'll settle for bacon and biscuits. And Wait a minute, time. Chester. Hmm? Yeah, it looks like we're going to have company at the river. Sure enough. They got a campfire going. Reckon it might be Indians? No Indian ever built a fire that big, Chester. Yeah. What do you think it could be way out here? There's only one way to find out. Cavalry's got a new uniform. Oh, Marshal Dillon, Chester. 
Sergeant Cromwell. Hello, Sergeant. Howdy. Sorry about that shot, Marshal. Yeah, as long as you didn't hit us. Uh, who's in charge, Sergeant? I am, Marshal. Lieutenant Dick. Oh, Lieutenant, I'm Matt Dillon. Uh, and this is Chester Proudfoot. I do. I don't remember seeing you around Dodge, Lieutenant. I've only been at the fort about a month, Marshal. Ah, I see. Yeah, we've got to know the sergeant here pretty well. <laughs> He's been our boarder, you might say, a few times. <laughs> I sure can't recommend accommodations. <laughs> oh, now, there. Uh, what's that cooking? Oh, buffalo steaks. You hungry? Well, well now, we I... got our own food, Sergeant. Yeah. Well, there's plenty for everybody, isn't there, Lieutenant? Yeah. Yes, of course. Join us, Marshal. Glad to have you. Uh, I'll just go tend the horses, Mr. Young. All right, Chester. You're a long way from Dodge, aren't you, Marshal? Yeah, we delivered a prisoner to Hayes City, and we're on our way back. I uh, don't have to ask you why you're out here. That's Mary Tabor over there, isn't it? So you know the story? Yeah, I heard of the touch when it gone out to ransom her from the Arapahoes. Yeah. We had that wagon loaded with trade goods to buy her back. Guns and ammunition included. No. They took it, of course. You got the girl. Only because I insisted the exchange be simultaneous. They brought the girl, we rode away and left the goods. Otherwise, we'd all been dead. Oh, why? Why, they'd have turned on us the minute they got the hands in them guns, Marshal. Well, I've always heard the Arapaho deal fairly. I wouldn't trust any Indian. Or anybody else, huh? What do you mean? That shot you had thrown at us. Just ordinary riders coming in with enough noise for a regiment. Yeah, it was only a warning. We got reason to be cautious, Marshal. Those Arapaho you trust so much have been following us ever since we made the exchange. How do you know? We've seen sign. Even caught a glimpse of a scout on the horizon a couple of times. They're out there all right, just waiting a chance to take her back. Why would they wait until you're only a day's ride out of Fort Dodge? Why wouldn't they jump you right there in their own country when they had the advantage? You're only a small detachment. Huh. Small is right. Eight men, that's all they'd allow me. Uh-huh. That makes you nervous, doesn't it? Marshal, I know there's somebody out there in the dark right now. Have you scouted since making camp? Certainly. Do you mind if I go out and take a look around? I got guards mounted. I'll handle them. Suit yourself, Marshal. Thank you. Um, you're new out here, aren't you, Lieutenant Dick? I've been commissioned over two years. Uh, this is your first tour on the plains, though, huh? What are you insinuating, Marshal? Nothing, Lieutenant. Nothing. But it's always better to know what you're facing. Sometimes you find you have nothing to be afraid of. Uh, you mind if I take Sergeant Cromwell with me? Go ahead. Thank you. say that he stopped at that clump of willows over there. Probably. But only one Indian. You know, come to think of it, it's always only one. We've seen signs for three days, but always only one rider at a time. Today I got a close look. It's an Arapaho. Now what do you think that means? Maybe that there is only one, Sergeant. Well then, well what's he doing here? I don't know. But somebody might. Who? Mary Tabor. Some of this buffalo steak is mighty good. Uh, thanks, Chester. Uh, in a minute, huh? Well, Marshal? You were right, Lieutenant. At least there's one Arapaho out there. A scout, of course. Maybe. Anyway, I don't think one man will try to attack eight, uh, now ten of us. Nevertheless, I'll keep my guards posted. Sure. Uh, Lieutenant, I'd like to talk to Mary Tabor, if you don't mind. Go ahead, if she'll talk to you. She 
won't to any of us. Of course, I suppose she's been through a lot. Go ahead, try. Thanks. Hello, Miss Tabor. I'm Marshal Dillon. I know. I've seen you around Dodge, Marshal. Oh? Well, well, folks back there will be mighty pleased that you're safe. Will they, Marshal? Well, sure. They thought you were killed like the rest of that wagon train. When the word came that you were still alive, everybody's mighty happy about it. Your father got together that wagon load of goods. I noticed he didn't come out himself. Well, it's a hard trip, ma'am, and he's not too young, you know. Besides, only eight men were allowed to go into the Arapaho camp. Look, Miss Tabor, your father isn't wealthy. It took almost everything he had to stock that wagon. I'm sorry, Marshal. I don't know what's wrong. They'll all be glad to have you back, Mary. I didn't know. I was afraid maybe they'd think... You know what they think, how most women are treated. It wasn't like that with me. It wouldn't matter if folks understand how it is. Do they, Marshal? They say so. But I've seen how they look at women who've come back. I did it myself, and I know what I was thinking. But it wasn't like that with me. I swear he didn't touch me. He? Two eagles. The Arapaho brave who bought me. Bought you? But you were captured by the Arapaho, weren't you? No. It was Cheyenne attacked the train. Killed everybody but me and two little boys. We rode all night. And then we came to the Arapaho village. And they sold me there. I guess they sold me because I was so much trouble. And so worn out. They took the little boys with them to raise as warriors, I guess. And this Arapaho, two eagles, bought you. For ten horses. Well, he must have valued you highly. That's a good price. But he didn't touch me, Marshal. I swear it, never in all the two months. He treated me fine, just like the rest of his family. Tell me, Miss Tabor, would he have any reason to follow you? Follow me? Yeah, now, here. Well, you think he's the one they've been seeing? I, I don't know. I'm only asking if there might be a reason for him to do it. I don't think so, Marshal. I don't think so. Well, well thanks, ma'am. Uh, and don't worry about the folks in Dodge or your father. He, he's going to be mighty glad to see you. Thanks, Marshal. Sure. Marshal? Uh, yes, ma'am? That Indian out there, they won't hurt him. Uh, no, ma'am, not if they don't see him. Your buffalo steak's getting cold. All right, Chester. Sergeant Cromwell says you found a sign. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. One Indian can't make too much trouble, can he? Well, that depends on the Indian, Chester. And why he's here. She lifts her head and looks around. Look, see, see there. Yeah, and I see why, Chester. Look over at the edge of that brush there. Why, that's an Indian. Be quiet. But Mister Dillon, just wait and watch. Yeah, she sees him. Well, sure she does. He's right there, plain as day. That fool guard must be sound asleep. Shouldn't we all have? What? Well, where'd that Indian go to? He's gone again. Disappeared. Be quiet, Chester. 
Just look at Mary Tabor. Oh, she's out of her blankets. Crawling away with Mr. Dillon. That girl's sneaking away out into the brush. She's going to that Indian. She's running away. Yeah, it looks like it. Well, we can't just lay here. If we tell them, Chester, they'll be shooting and somebody will get hurt. Maybe the girl. I'm going to follow her. And you follow me maybe 20 or 30 paces, huh? But be quiet. Don't worry. That guard's lab will start throwing lead at any sound he hears out there. All right. Let's go. had seen him or if he tried to come into camp. So this is Two Eagles, huh? This is the man who bought you? Yes. And he's young? Yes. And he's handsome? Yes. And he's come to claim his property? It's not like that. I told you it was never like that. I know you probably won't believe it. I know the lieutenant never could, but... He's a good man, Marshal, gentle and kind and good. Do you believe that? Maybe. What do you mean? He's an Arapaho. An Indian. No. Oh. You mean he's only a savage? I'm sorry, Marshal, and you're right. There were times when I almost forgot it. And then something would remind me. Something that would turn my stomach. That's why... That's the only reason why... You didn't become his wife? Yes. Any of the others would simply have taken me. Especially after they paid ten horses. That made me his to do with just as he liked. But he courted me, Marshal. Stood in his blanket outside the teepee and sang to me. It was frightening, but it was lovely, too. Do you understand, Marshal? It was lovely, and I listened. I listened. I understand, Mary. And I'm not ashamed. When you tell them back in Dodge, tell them that, too. I'm not ashamed. Mary, how much of what we're saying does he understand? Not much. I taught him a few words of English. He taught me a few of Arapaho. But it was mostly like animals that we understood each other... By the way it was said, by the tone of voice. You should have told Lieutenant Dake about him, Mary. What for? He'd have been all the more delighted to shoot him on sight. What are you going to do? Are you going to go back with two eagles? You know I can't. Then why did you come out here? I told you to warn him, send him back before something happened. Are you sure, Mary? You must have known once he had his hands on you again, he wouldn't let you go. Didn't you know that? I suppose I did, Marshal. And what are you going to do? You mean you... You'd let me go with him? 
If that's what you really want. If you're sure. Mr. Dillon? Yeah, I hear him, Chester. Oh, they've discovered you're gone, Miss Tabor. There's not much time. Go. Go. How could I ever be sure, Marshal? None of us can ever be sure about the future, Miss Tabor, but you can't fear the future either. You have to decide what you want and then stick to your decision. But if I live to regret it... If you have to question it, Mary, then you're not sure enough. Squaw, come. He's getting drunk, Mr. Dillon. What are you going to do, Miss Tabor? Two eagle love, come. No two eagles. I can't. I can't. It would be wrong. Oh, Marshal, how can I tell him? I can't help you. Goodbye, two eagles. No. Goodbye and thank you. Love. I'll never forget you. No. All right, come on. Chester, hold him. I'll take her. Now, now go on, two eagles. Squaw, go. Go on that way, fast. Oh, it's good for you. Now, go on back to your people. Hurry. It ain't much time. Now, go on. Get away. Get away. Stop. thought he could do against eight men, though. It's almost like he wanted to die. I understand, Sergeant. He must have been crazy to follow you all this way. But you never know about Indians. Don't you worry, miss. There's nothing more to fear. Your ordeal is over. We'll be in Dodge by nightfall. Thank you, Lieutenant. Here, let me help you on the wagon. Thank you. I'm sure once you're safely back in Dodge, we'll be able to Make you forget all this. I'll make it my personal project to help. Before long, the whole thing will be just an unpleasant nightmare. Will it, Lieutenant? Why, well, yes, of course. Uh, excuse me. All right, men, ready to move out. Yes, sir, Lieutenant. We'll be ready to move out in just a minute, Marshal. All right, Lieutenant. Well, Marshal... We buried him up on the hill overlooking the river, Mary. I, uh... I brought this little medicine bag, I thought. Thought you might like it for a memento. <laughs> Maybe it all happened for the best, Mary. Someday it'll be forgotten. Will it, Marshal? Will I ever again find a man who loved me that much? That I don't know, Mary. That I really don't know. and directed by Norman McDonald stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Dunkel with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Gene Bates, Jack Moyles, and Vic Perrin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week for another story on Gunsmoke.